Oh, last week we had a team that discussed commissions. Like, should I cut my commission? No. I mean, what should I say? How do I not cut my commission? We even role played some ideas. Okay. So we were talking about this, you know, the pressure on our commissions. Uh -huh. And so this week, one of the people on that team came across a study that he had heard about before, but brought as a parade of techniques. It was done at Stanford University in the year 2014. And it was about pricing, about the fee that we pay and then how satisfied we are. So what they did is they bought pizzas and they served pizzas to people for $5 a slice, for $7 a slice, for $9 a slice, and for $25 a slice. Okay, that better be some pizza. The same pizza. <laughs> okay. And? And then after this, the person had purchased the pizza, they did a survey and asked them how much they liked the pizza. Mm. And here's what was discovered. The more you paid for the pizza, the more you liked the pizza. Isn't that weird? So, and it was funny because when he brought that up, then like three other people went, that, I would have totally agree with that. I would totally say that is my clients as well, that the people that pressure me to come down, they're super hard to please. They don't give you as good of a rating. There's just something about that transaction. And the people that pay full price never argue about it, say, oh my gosh, this was the greatest experience I ever had. So figure out what your commission is, charge that. Well, for $25 a slice, pizza should grow hair on my head. <laughs> That's what I think. Uh, oh, I have so many good parades of techniques today. You do? I don't know which to choose. Aww. Did you know that there's a YouTube video, a series of videos with Og Mandino reading the 10 scrolls? Really? Yeah. It's on YouTube. With Og Mandino and it's reading. free. Yeah. So if you're starting the scrolls, go there. But here's what I wanted to talk about. My grandparents told me. Is this your way that, of sneaking into parade yes. techniques without admitting that you're doing it? That there used to be a song on the radio. All right. Called You're So Vain. You're. Yeah. That was 1970s. Carly Simon. And one of the lyrics is, you flew your Learjet off to Nova Scotia to see the total eclipse of the sun, because that's, that's right. what everybody was doing. Yeah. Well, guess what? In a couple of weeks, it's coming back. Oh, yeah. We're total probably eclipse of the sun. The last time in a lot of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And this is like a total eclipse. There's a whole swath of North America that's going to be right in its path yeah. and be able to see it perfectly. I think the epicenter is Rochester, New York. Anyway. When you look at an eclipse of the sun, and if you stare at it too long, you can damage your eyesight. Right. Unless you wear special glasses. Okay. So, one of our people ordered 200 pairs of special eclipse glasses. And they're doing drop-offs at all their clients oh. with a little note. And what does the note say? It mm -hmm. says... The sun may temporarily disappear during the eclipse, but we're always going to be here to protect your equity, just like these glasses will protect your eyesight. Oh, that's awesome. That's brilliant. I, I think love it's that. a great technique. Yeah. So there might still be time to order some glasses. There might still. We're still. I like imagine we get away. super close that it will be. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't that expensive, the glasses themselves. But think of the principle of, yeah, yeah. you know, that there's an upcoming. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't even have to be a celestial event. It could be, who knows, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay. Something that you could help the people in your book of business, your favorite people, observe and have fun at and attend. Okay. Ask the experts. Drum roll. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've got someone who they were in the percussion section, right? I was thinking of um, okay. National Lampoons. Oh yeah. Christmas vacation. Anyway, 
Um, we have a student who has a $1 million condominium and it's been on the market for 70 days. Now in her marketplace, this is a high end property. And in some marketplaces, condos have softened just a little bit. Well, whatever the case in your area, she came to the call saying, I went to my broker and they said, well, why don't you consider doing a broker open? Yeah. Well, you know, a couple reasons, like uh, it's a secure building and how do I do this? And, you know, so anyway, what do you think of the idea of doing a broker open at this condo? All right. So here was the response. Heck yeah, because what you're going to do is you're going to pass off that the price is too high on to all the people that came to the open house, right? So it's not me. I thought you could get it. I think it's a great property, but look what the other experts in our area are telling us. Looker feedback. Right. So you are going to have, first of all, you got to make sure you got a bunch of agents that come through. And when they do, you're going to have a little slip of paper, right? A Like a tally card that says... Uh, what do you think of the price? It's too high, too low, right on. Um, you could do a contest. Guess what this will sell for. Right. And then yeah. the person that gets closest to that is the winner in whatever time it takes to sell it. Um, you could do some video promo. So what if you were going to have this broker open and you go over there? Now, this is a North a Midwestern uh, city. What if you yeah. go over there on a blustery day with your fur coat, you know, park your Mercedes in front or rent one or do a test drive on one? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what if you could do some little promo videos to get people excited about this upscale property? Um, let's see, what else did they say? Oh, Target, where the buyer who would buy this property lives now. Mm -hmm. Do they live in a condo that is maybe 500 to 700 and this would be a move up? Do they live in a McMansion and they don't want to give up their quality, but they need to size down or maybe they have been widowed or something like that? So do a campaign uh, for them, maybe you could do a piggyback and do both a broker open and a regular person open and invite them to this special little regular open. person. Yeah. And then hire. <laughs> uh, yes, you'll need a door opener, right, to greet people because it is secure building. But you probably also need a second person to be able to show them the amenities of the property. So someone to show them the pool, the bowling alley, the balcony, whatever. And then somebody in the, the 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 unit itself. So you almost probably need three people. And then here, I love this. If you knew who this was, you'd go, oh, yes, of course she said this. But here's what she said. That's it. Throw a party. <laughs> and I love that because that atmosphere of party is attractive, right? There's a there's a group of people that, that want to come to a party. So throw a party. I like smart people. Yeah. Those we got are a lot. great ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my Ask the Experts is about how do I get my price point up? Okay. Mm, because a couple of years ago, I wanted the same thing to happen. Okay. So here's what I did. I went out and invested in an upscale automobile. All right. And that helped. I won't mention the brand name because they're not subsidizing the podcast. <laughs> Well, we can guess. We know the high high end Something. cars, and that made a difference for this yeah, person, right? So she'd come up, or he would come up in that fancy car, and people would say, "Oh, you must be good at what you do." But now, I want to go all to out the next price okay. range, okay. right? Because things are like back to normal. I'm back in the same old price range. Oh, okay. I'm busy, but back in the same old price range. So, what can I do besides going out and buying? At the next highest upscale vehicle. Well, um, first answer was, what's so wrong with being busy? It's okay. Yeah. Okay. How about networking? Where are those people networking? And that's where you should go. Uh, don't try to do the whole market. Pick a street and start there. Hmm. We've got an, uh, a client in Ohio that allows agents to open a community office, which is like a storefront. So maybe you find a little storefront in the community hmm. where the upscale prices are. Um, this is another very interesting response. I don't care about price. I'm all about listings. Okay. So I just get listings. 
I think that was a great answer. Mm -hmm. You know, because somebody else pointed out that in the same month, he had closed uh, a $2 million house and a $110,000 oh, single wide. <laughs> That's funny. But the single wide was a 10% commission and he got both sides. So that was the next suggestion. Yeah. Raise your commission. If, mm -hmm. if the reason you want to up your price point is because you want to increase your income, we'll raise your commission instead. Remember the Margaret Rome dialogue. Yeah. I'm the most expensive realtor you'll ever find. And if you find one higher, I'm going to raise my rates. That's right. Okay. Target higher end expireds. And here's why. The average agent is afraid of luxury homes and luxury homeowners and luxury homeowner expired listings, especially. But those sellers will engage with you and they'll speak with you if you speak their language, if you know your numbers, if you know your dollars and cents, and if you look and dress the part. Ah. So fit in with them. Um, every sale that you have, whatever the price range, should result in two to three referrals. So concentrate on that instead of trying to increase a specific number. But I like the, uh, the especially the advice, if you want to list luxury homes, go where luxury homeowners go. Rub elbows. That's right. I like it. Have yourself a wonderful week, and we'll see you back here on Mondays with Mike and Mary. Go get a listing.